Look at her, don't she look amazing? Mm. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Lee, aka Rolling Thunder. And in today's video, we're going to be discussing five things that bikers fear. So sit back, relax, grab a cup of tea and let us get into the video. So ladies and gents, how are we all doing? I hope you're doing well. You join me on another chilly evening ride home and uh, as the topic of today's video we are going to be talking about five things that most if not all bikers fear. So in no particular order we're going to go through the top five things that I believe that most bikers or if not all bikers fear whilst being a biker and in life in general. So first item on the list is breaking down. I think every biker hates the idea of breaking down. I know I certainly do. And uh, it can be anything from something simple like a puncher to a chain snapping, a engine throwing a rod, anything mechanical or electrical, especially electrical, that could be a right pain in the arse. But uh, it's one of the things that I believe most, if not all, bikers fear. Next item on the list, and like I say, this is in no particular order, is bad drivers stroke riders. Now if you've been watching my videos of late you will know that I've had quite a few encounters with some exceptionally exceptionally piss poor riders namely moped riders working for Just Eat, Deliveroo, Uber and God knows what other firms that I've happened to come across. And you will have to excuse me for a minute ladies and gents as uh, the R1 needs a drink. So we are going to nip into this petrol station conveniently placed right in front of me and we are going to get ourselves some petroleum 155 a litre what a fucking joke look at her don't she look amazing mm. right so after that little petroleum interlude where were we oh yes number three on the list of five things that bikers fear is naturally crashing <coughs> now i've had my fair share of crashes over the years some which were my fault, some which weren't. For the ones that weren't my fault, I hold my hands up too. For the ones that weren't my fault, it absolutely sucked. And not to mention the fact that it fucking hurt. Admittedly, yes, bikes can be fixed. Gear can be replaced. But if you hurt yourself to the point where you can no longer ride, that's not going to do you, your friends, your family, your loved ones, your work colleagues, and everyone in between any favours and especially if you have an accident again if you're acting a little bit foolishly I mean obviously you do get the times where you do go out with your mates and you end up going a bit faster than what you really should do get pushed a little bit out of your comfort zone and things happen do you know what I mean so in some instances it can't be helped Especially if, for example, you're out with a group of friends and they're going somewhere that they've been to hundreds of times before and you end up not knowing where the fuck you're going. So as you can appreciate, that kind of thing isn't great. And again, trust me on this one because I've been there, I've done that, I've got the t-shirt. Just be careful out there, do you know what I mean? And it's not always you that has the accident and it's not always you that causes you to crash. Sometimes it could be the weather, Sometimes it could be the road conditions, i.e. you don't see oil on the road or black ice or you run through a puddle that's deeper than what you realise and you end up coming off because there's a massive hole underneath the puddle. You know, you've got all those, all those kind of variables to take into account when it comes to crashing. Not so much on the track, but definitely on the street. These things and more that you need to take into consideration when riding, whether it be in and around London, or round country lanes or just anywhere really in general. If it's not a racetrack, then you need to be aware of all of these obstacles and all of these hazards. And let's face it, a lot of car drivers these days either have never been taught to keep an eye out for a motorcyclist or just choose not to. And if they go with the latter and they just choose not to see a motorcyclist, then just as, they're just as big a dickheads as the people that cause the accidents. So as you can appreciate, when it comes to 
things like accidents that are caused by other people i'm not going to hold back and say oh you know it's all dependent on the circumstances and blah 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 I mean, yeah, okay, it is, but the fact of the matter is, if the accident isn't your fault and you get caught up in something that's not your fault and you didn't start or whatever, then, you know, someone needs to be held accountable. And nine times out of ten, and I hate to say this, but it's, in my opinion, I think it's true, nine times out of ten, it's always the biker that's held responsible, even if it's someone else's fault. So that's number three. Number four on my list of five things bikers fear is motorcycle theft. I unfortunately have been a victim of motorcycle theft three times in 20 years and you might think that's not a bad statistic or a bad ratio but again just like the other points that I've made it's fucking inconvenient it's emotional it's tiring I mean it's emotionally tiring it's financially straining it's emotionally straining and you know every time I've had a bike stolen I've hated every fucking second of it. I mean, who who like <laughs> who likes having their bike stolen? I mean, I don't think I know any biker that like and liked having their bike stolen. But you know, it's one of those things where it's not ideal. It is fucking inconvenient. I mean, massively inconvenient. What's this anus doing? I mean, I don't know how else to say it, but. It's horrible. I hated it. Every time I had a bike stolen, I absolutely hated every second of it. From phoning the police, to the actual insurance claim, to waiting for the insurance people to get back to me, to see what I'm going to get out of a claim, or whether I'm going to get paid out, or whatever. But, you know, it's... It's all horrible, do you know what I mean? It, the, the whole process, the amount of time it takes, getting police reports and getting all the other information from your insurers, from, let's like say, the police and all that kind of stuff. It's just an absolute fucking pain in the ass. I will also apologise for the fact that I've had to ride my visor open yet again because it's not very early in the evening and the sun is still setting rather early. And thanks to the wind, I have now got a snotty nose. And the last, if not the most important thing, on my list of five things that motorcyclists, bikers, all fear, or most of them fear, is uh, that horrible thing that no one really wants to talk about, but I'm gonna talk about it because if I don't, who will? And that is dying. No one wants to die. No one likes the idea of dying. I mean, I certainly don't like the idea of dying. And I'm pretty sure all you lovely people watching my video, or should I say all you lovely people that are watching the video, don't like the idea of dying either. Because believe me, again, <laughs> it's not a nice thing to talk about, but at the same time, I personally think that it's one of the five things on my list that most people, especially bikers, fear. You know, it's, it's healthy to have the fear of dying, I'm not gonna lie. But at the same time, if you think about it too much and you procrastinate about it and you're constantly thinking, oh, when am I going to die? What's going to happen? What's going to ha what's gonna happen to my family? What's going to happen to my stuff? And all that kind of thing. It kind of holds you back from living. But that's the, uh, probably the most important thing of my, of my uh, uh, what's good me? I think of the five things that I've mentioned in this video, I think probably dying is the most important and the most, you know, surreal, but also one of the most obvious. And not to mention, the most hard-hitting thing of all things in this list because you know life and death waits for no man you know you could be a 16 year old kid and you could die of cancer you could live to 100 and you could die choking on something you've eaten you know mother nature and destiny they are non-discriminatory or indiscriminate however you want to put it if it's your time to go it's your time to go and I'm not going to say anything I wouldn't say to anyone face to face nor am I going to turn around and sugarcoat it because at the end of the day it's life if you're going to die you're going to die you could be ready for it you might not be ready for it you could die tomorrow you could die getting out of bed do you know what I mean 
And of the five things that I've mentioned in this video, I think that's probably the one that's the most prevalent and the one that's the scariest. Because yes, okay, breaking down is a pain in the ass. Yes, okay, bad drivers and bad riders is inconvenient. Yes, okay, crashing is also equally inconvenient and potentially life changing. Bike thrift is exceptionally, exceptionally frustrating and annoying and time consuming and financially consuming. But dying, whether it be on two wheels, four wheels, on a unicycle, getting out of bed, falling down a flight of stairs, you know, any of those things that could cause you to have a seriously bad day and result in you losing your life, that has probably got to be the most scariest thing of all. I mean, no one knows when you're going to die, do you know what I mean? You can't predict, oh, I'm going to die on the 21st of February 2027 and I'm going to predict how I'm going to die and all that kind of stuff, you know, you can't do it. You can plan until you're blue in the face. You can have all the plans set up in the world for your funeral, for your personal effects to be taken care of, your family to be taken care of after you pass. If you've got a will, that gets sorted out. You know, all these things that you can plan ahead for, you can do to a certain degree. But, when it happens, that is not something you can control. You can't control when the big man upstairs decides it's your time to go. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of things in life that you can control and you can plan for and you can predict but there's certain things like dickheads like that that you can't predict you can't plan for. I know there's a, the, the old saying live every day as if it's your last but if it does happen to be your last day I don't think you want to be going out in a ball of flames do you know what I mean? If I could predict or not necessarily arrange, but be able to say, yes, I want this to happen when I die, I want that to happen when I die. Then I'd be more worried about dying than I would be living. In an ideal world, you shouldn't have to worry about what's going to happen when you die. You know, life is for living, not for dying. You've got all the time to worry and sleep when you're dead. Do you know what I mean? And as morbid as that sounds, ladies and gents, that's how I see life. Do you know what I mean? If you don't live your life, then you waste it. But anyway, ladies and gents, as always, thank you for watching the video to the end. If you wouldn't mind giving this video a thumbs up, and if you're not already subscribed, please consider doing so. It'd be great to have you on board so you can keep up to date and be, join me along my YouTube journeys. And if you are subscribed, don't forget to smash the like button, ring the bell so you can kept up to date with all notifications. And what can I say, ladies and gents, you guys, as always, have been absolutely fucking awesome. And I can't thank you enough for the continued love and support you've been showing the channel. And if you've got any comments about the this video or any other video that I've done or any video that is upcoming, please feel free to drop it in the comments box down below and I'll do my best to get back to you as quickly as I can. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, you guys have been absolutely fucking awesome. I have been Lee, aka Rolling Thunder, saying look after yourselves, look after each other, stay safe on the roads, be aware of COVID-19, be safe, be happy, and as always, adios!